Hey guys, Mike here from Fortinet Guru. Um, it's actually my second time doing this particular video. The first one I got all the way done videotaping it and realized that audio wasn't working for some reason. So, finally got the whiteboard up. Wanted to go ahead and do a, uh, a use case that I ran into where Fortinet really helped me out as far as the hardware and its robustness and its capabilities. So a little bit of um, a little bit of backstory here. Had a client that I was flown into. Um, they had an older ASA and didn't have support. Their IT staff wasn't comfortable making changes to it. They just didn't trust it, right? And the the kick was that they couldn't just do a full fledged cutover to a new appliance. Um, they didn't have the capability for the troubleshooting. They couldn't take the possible downtime, so they had to do this as safely as possible. So, a little bit about their environment. And I'm going to try to draw this a little bit bigger. Uh, my handwriting normally is relatively small, but I want to try to make this as visible as possible for you guys. So they had an outside router that then went out to the internet. And from that router, it came down into the old ASA device that they were running, right? Uh, this is the device that no support, no maintenance. It had a whole bunch of stuff on it too, so um, the risk of just doing a cutover was detrimental to them. They, they were scared to death. So, and then of course, the ASA then came into their switch. Now the way their switch was configured was most of these ports were native VLAN um, 1. No, well, the outside interfaces were native VLAN 1. So this was native VLAN 1 and all that jazz. And then of course it had multiple VLANs for various services. Um, servers were hanging off one, wireless was hanging off another, etc. But the default gateway lived on the native VLAN 1. So they have a, a, a smart switch, an old device, and then their edge router. And basically what we did to get them situated was we deployed a, uh, a FortiGate 1500D uh, in, trans in VDOM mode. So we had two, uh, two VDOMs. And basically, let's see what side will be better. I have the 1500D, single box, workhorse, very strong box, and we basically cut it in half. This side was NAT. This side was transparent. Now, we divided it into two VDOMs for multiple reasons, but the main ones being one, with a transparent VDOM, we could slide the FortiGate in line of the ASA without having to move cables, without having to cause any outages or anything like that. And what that did was that gave us the ability to have. Um, the visibility that the Fortinet device afforded us, as well as the threat protection, which removed one layer of issue with the old ASA. It didn't have support. The only real thing that could have come in and kind of threw us a curveball from that point would be if the ASA actually failed. So, basically what we did was we took the inside interface of the transparent VDOM and we put it on an interface that was tagged for the original external interfaces native VLAN. So they were both on VLAN 1. And just for example, we'll say that the inside interface for the ASA was .254. .254 was the default gateway to go out. So we have our inside interface on the same VLAN as the existing default gateway. And then we took our outside interface and we connected it to a port that was on a new VLAN. Now for the sake of uh, drawing and simplicity, I'm just going to say VLAN 2, when really it was like VLAN 2011 or something like that. Um, so we stood that thing up and we gave it VLAN 2, the outside interface. Now from here, what we did we have our physical connectivity set up. Our inside interface of the transparent VDOM is on the original VLAN that the uh, default gateway lives on. 
Our external interface is going to be on our new VLAN, just like it should be. And then we went through and we made sure that we had all of our policy, our inside to outside, our outside to inside policy with the appropriate UTM. Then, once we were sure that the transparent VDOM would flow traffic the way we needed it to without killing anything, most of our UTM policies were monitor only mode for the start so we wouldn't break anything unnecessarily. We took the port that the ASA inside interface was originally connected to and we changed it from a native VLAN of 1 to a native VLAN of 2. What's that do for traffic flow? Okay. So what that does for traffic flow is when it was VLAN 1, when it was on the original VLAN, traffic from the switch would come up and just go straight to the ASA. Go out to the internet, come back, etc. When we made it to where the inside interface of the ASA was on the same VLAN as the outside interface of our transparent VDOM, as far as the switch is concerned, the only way to get to that dot .254 address was to go up through the layer 2 bridge that our, uh, our transparent VDOM then created. So all of a sudden, our traffic's no longer going straight out the ASA. It's going out this transparent VDOM. We're getting all the wonderful visibility that we wanted. We're able to uh, take you know, action at the layer 7 of the OSI layer and really dive in and do what we need, which is wonderful. This gives us what we need, right? So we now have solved the issue of the ASA not having security or service uh, coverage. Uh, we're back down to, oh, uh, if it fails, right? So now, in order to tackle the whole migration of services, we put the outside interface of the FortiGate on its own public IP. And then we plugged its inside interface into a port that was tagged for VLAN 1 as well. And just for example's sake, we'll say that the inside interface of the 1500D NAT VDOM was now .253. So now we have two paths. The traditional path with added threat protection thanks to our transparent VDOM. It goes up, comes back down, then goes out the ASA. And then we have our new one where we can migrate services to. We have a new public IP. This particular client had a slash 28, so they had several that they were not using. We had a new default gateway. So we were able to migrate IPsec tunnels one at a time to the 1500D. And then on the switch, just say, oh, you're trying to get to 10.120.120.0 slash 24, go to 253 instead of the original of 254. So it would go out and so forth. And basically what we did was we brought um, public IP space over, we brought NATs over, we brought IPsec tunnels over one at a time, and one of the tremendous benefits of, of doing that was we didn't have to do a cutover of a device that had, you know, 50 IPsec tunnels, a whole bunch of different NAT translations and rules and things of that nature, weird traffic shaping from previous, you know, folks way back when. So this gave us the ability to do very specific change management, which was critical for this particular organization. Um, so, you know, we're going to bring over IPsec tunnel 101. Well, 101 is for this particular service. We know exactly what we're changing. We know how to roll back fast. It doesn't impact the entire business. And it gives us a very specific list of things to troubleshoot in the event that something didn't go wrong, didn't go right. So this is the way I usually do things unless it's a smaller home office or a smaller, uh, uh, a small business. Once you get to the middle tier and things like that, this is, this is the best way to go because you bring things over one at a time, you do it right, you cause the minimum downtime. Now, if they're a business where they're able to be down for a day, let's say like a Sunday because it's a low business day, sure, do the cutover method and go for that, but dual VDOM in your device, migrating services over, and then wiping the transparent VDOM and the ASA from the picture once you're done. That would be the way that I would take, personally. So it's a good use case, gives you some ideas on different ways to tackle problems, and then from there you can really jump in and, and see how the Fortinet hardware can give you what you need.
Um, if you have any questions, please uh, don't hesitate to throw them in the comments below. If you have um, examples of situations that you've been in, I can, I'll be more than happy to uh, whiteboard it out and give my advice on what I personally would have done or would do in that situation. Um, one of the good things about what I do is I see pretty much every different de deployment type, right? Every organization has their own way of doing things. Not all of it makes sense. Not all of it's best practice. So I get a lot of opportunity to see an ugly baby and help make it right. So leave your comments below, and I will see you next time. Thank you.